Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through solving trig equations at National 5 level. Okay, so we're going to go into the CAS diagram, how it's used, why it's used, and how we find supplementary solutions using the CAS diagram, and then going into solving each trig equation. Okay, so... To be able to solve a trig equation, you need to be able to identify where the solutions of the equation exist and provide all the solutions of a trig equation. Okay, now most candidates tend to think that they get one answer out of their calculator, but that, because of the symmetry of the graphs, is not true. Okay, so if we look at sine x is equal to a half, okay, if we take the inverse of sine, so that we're just left with x, it gives you 30. Okay, but that isn't our... As I've just said, it's not our um, full solution. Okay, if we take a look at the sine graph, if we draw in the, the line y is equal to half, there it's there, then you can see that that line hits the graph in two places. So we've got two solutions and not just one. Okay, so if the first one's 30, then we use the symmetry of the graph and go back from 180 degrees, so if we then did 180 minus that 30 degrees, we would get 150 degrees. So our two solutions for sine x is equal to half, are 30 degrees and 150 degrees. But as much as we would, we can, we don't want to have to be, have to draw out the graph every single time, so we've, we've, there is an alternative method and that's where our cast diagram comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at what happens to the graphs in each quadrant, whether it's positive and whether it's, or whether it's negative. So we're going to go up in increments of 90 degrees and we're going to have a look at that first quadrant first. So between 0 and 90 degrees, as you can see, sine is positive. Your cosine wave is positive and your tan wave is positive as well. Okay, so that means that all three graphs that we're looking at are positive between 0 and 90 degrees and we'll give you positive answers out. Okay, now between 90 and 180 degrees, let's see what happens. So sine is positive, the cosine wave is negative and your tan wave is negative. Okay, so the only one that's positive in there is sine. From 180 to 270, we've got sine is negative, it's below the x-axis. Cos is negative, again below the x-axis, but tan is positive, it's above the x-axis. And that's the only one that is positive between 180 and 270 degrees. Okay, then we move on to the last quadrant between 270 and 360. Now sine is negative. Cos is, is positive and tan is negative. So again, cos is the only one that's positive in that last quadrant. Now we're going to use these to advantage the fact that sine is the only one that's positive in the second, tan is the only one that's positive in the third, and cos is the only one that's positive in the last. Okay, so we're going to change these. All of them are positive. That's what the A stands for. Sine is the only one that's positive. Okay, which also, on the flip side, means that tan and cos are negative between 90 and 180 degrees. Tan is the only one that's positive in the third, and cos is the only one that's positive in the last quadrant. Okay, so we can tell, we can now tell without having to draw out the graphs where each graph is positive, which at which increment, sorry, each graph is positive in, and which each is negative in. Okay. Now what we do is we use the as we said at the beginning, the, the symmetry of the graph to find out, to find these supplementary answers. Right, so to solve a trig equation, okay, and apologies, that copy shouldn't be there. I don't want you to copy this down. Okay, um, determine which quadrants your solutions are going to lie in using your cast diagram. Find the first angle. Now, the, the first angle will be in quadrant one, and that's the one that your calculator will give you. Okay, and then find the solutions to the appropriate. Now, each one, regardless of your angle, if the, if it's a positive or negative line that we're giving you, each one we're going to find the answer in quadrant one, and then we're going to use that for the cast diagram. Okay, so let's take a look at sine x is equal to half again. Now, without the graph, what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse of sine. Okay, now, as you can see, that half is positive, so it's in the first quadrant, and sine is also positive in the second quadrant. Okay, so 
Inverse of sine, you've got, I'm giving you that 30 degrees. Now, like I said, we're going to use the symmetry of the graph and we're going to come back from 180 degrees. So every single time I, I want an answer in that second quadrant, I'm going to do 180 minus the related angle, that 30 degrees, to give me, this time, 150 degrees. Okay? So, let's take a look at another one. In a second. Right, so, as you can see, what I'm trying to do here is I'm giving you the symmetry of the graph. Okay? So, for every single one, you'll get your related angle by typing it into the calculator, but if you want your an answer in the second quadrant, you'll do 180 minus that related answer, the related angle. If you want one in the third quadrant, so when tan is positive, you'll do 180 plus your related angle, and then the last one, you'll do 360 minus your related angle. Again, it's all to do with the symmetry of the graph. Right, so I've given you a full worked example here looking at a different one. Okay, let me take you through it. So as you can see from the graph, we've got two solutions. I want sine x is equal to 0 0.259. Now what I'm telling you there is I'm drawing y is equal to 0 0.259 and I want to know when sine is hitting that that line. Okay, now it's going to set it, hit it here. Now to get that answer, I'll do shift sine of 0 0.259, I'll get that answer out of my calculator, and that was 15 degrees. But to get that second answer, I'm going to use my cast diagram. Now, sine is positive. This is positive. So it, because sine is positive, I want it in here. Okay, so I'm going to do 180 minus that related angle to give me 165 degrees. Okay, now, as I've said, the cast diagram tells me exactly where. Now, I've given you a lot of information in there. So, only sine is positive in the second quadrant. So, I've got tan and cos that are both negative in here. Then, in the third quadrant, sine is negative and cos is negative because tan is positive. And in the last quadrant, sine is negative and tan is negative in that last quadrant, okay? What we've also given you is we've given you the how to find the angle. So using the symmetry of the graph, what I would like you to do to find an angle in the second quadrant is do 180 minus that related angle. Okay, the third quadrant, so when tan is, pos uh, is positive, do 180 plus the related angle. And then to find one in the fourth quadrant, you'll do 360 minus the related angle. Okay? Now, we will use the cast diagram in um, higher maths as well, and it has to be well known. It will be an, a skill that every National 5 candidate should have under their belt in order to tackle the higher maths um, curriculum. So please make sure that they know it well and they know how to use it. Okay, so let's go into negative values. Now, again, I've given you a, a full worked example, so let me take you through it. So cos x is equal to negative 0 0.766. So this time I've drawn the line y equals negative 0 0.766. Now, you can see it's negative. Apologies. You can see it's negative just now. Okay, so that means that what I want is cos. So I want to end the... Sorry, it's, I don't have an answer in the first quadrant, but I do have an answer in the second quadrant and the third quadrant because cos is negative in the two quadrants. Again, apologies about the phone. Okay, so what I want to do is never ever put this negative into your calculator. It'll give you the answer that's closest to the y axis and that's not what we're looking for just now. Okay, so... Put it in, put 0 0.7766 into your calculator, it'll give you the, uh, the answer that's in the first quadrant and that's what we want to find. So it'll give you that 40 degrees. Then as we've discussed, okay, it'll then give, you can then go on and find the, the two answers that I'm looking for by using the cast diagram. So as we've said, cos is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Okay, to get an answer in the second quadrant, I want to do 180 minus, so that 40, and then 180 plus to get into the third quadrant. Okay, and my two answers, that 40 degrees is not an answer that I'm looking for, but I need that to get to find the other two answers. And my two answers for this solution are 140 degrees 
and 220 degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Again, apologies. Okay, so again, I'm not going to put that zero, the negative into my calculator. What I want to do is I want to do cos to the minus one is equal to 0 0.45. That'll give me an answer in the first quadrant. And then I'm going to use that to find the two answers that I'm looking for. So cos is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So it's these two that I want it in. So I've got x is equal to 180 minus, this is me going into the second quadrant. And I've got 180 plus that 63 to get into the, the third quadrant. Okay, so I would have 117 and I would have 243 degrees. Okay, so again, apologies about the phone. Let me take you into another example, just to be sure. We're going to look at tan x is equal to negative 3. So again, this negative never goes into my calculator. When tan is negative, I want an answer in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Okay, so I've got x is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 3. Okay, straight into your calculator. So x is equal to 71.6 degrees. Okay, now I don't want that answer, but I need that answer to find the two answers that I do need. So then to get into that second quadrant, I'm doing 180 minus 71.6. And to get into the last quadrant, I do 360 minus. Now again, that's because of the symmetry of the graph that we can do this. So my first answer is 108.4. And my second answer is 288.4 degrees. Okay, and again, that 71.6 is not one of my answers, but I need that to find my two other answers. Okay, so rearranging a, a trig equation. So, there should be an equals in there, apologies. One, please. For some reason, it's missed out all my, all my notation. So, let's go into it. If I want to rearrange this, then I'm going to Balance the equation. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to add one onto both sides, which gives me two x plus a two a two sine x is equal to one. Okay, then I want to divide by this two. Apologies, I'm in school, so that was the bell. Okay, and I get sine x is equal to half. Then I want rid of this sign. Okay, now the way that I do that is I take the inverse of sine. So I type into my calculator shift sine of zero point five, and it'll give me thirty degrees. Okay, and we're back to the same equation, same one that we did earlier on. Okay, sine is positive in the second quadrant, so I do 180 minus that 30 to give me 150, and my two answers are 30 and 150. So although this one is slightly disguised, 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0 is exactly the same as finding sine x is equal to half that we've already done. Okay, but they like to disguise it if you like, so they need to make sure that they rearrange the equation because we're changing the subject to the formula to x. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. And again, apologies, all my signs seem to have disappeared. So let's go for a plus and equals. We'll do a negative one this time. So this time I'm going to rearrange it. I want to take two away from both sides. And then I want to divide through by that five. So I would get minus two over five. Again, the negative doesn't go into the, the calculator. So I do shift cos of two fifths and I get x is equal to 
Okay, that is not one of my answers. We know it's negative. Cos is negative. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Cos is negative in the second and the third quadrant. So I'm going to use that related angle and I'm going to do 180 minus. This is the second quadrant. And then 180 plus. So I've got 113.6 and 246.4 as my two answers. Okay, so what we've done just now is we've taken you through the cast diagram, what the cast diagram does. Okay, it uses the symmetry of the graph. We don't have to draw the graph out every single time to find um, the solutions to trig equations. Each trig equation, most of them, sorry, not every single one of them, because if you've got um, sine x equals 1, for instance, it'll give you 90 degrees, that would, and there only is one maximum. So for the majority of trig equations, you'll have two solutions, okay, and you'll use the the related angle that you find to begin with, the one that you get out of your calculator to calculate the two solutions for your trig equations. If you've got any questions, please contact the school and again, I can